I have an 80% win rate as TA going 16 and 4 in my last 20 games in 7k average. TA mid is considered as one of those greedy mid laners that grief the game because they eat space rather than make space. I figured out the secret formula that allows you to not only create space but also snowball games as a Templar assassin. For the early item build, I usually go for slippers of agility, triple branch, a set of tangles and fairy fire. This build allows me to get my bottle before the water rune spawn timer. Slippers and the stats from the branches give me agility that will enable me to have attack speed and damage that can be utilized to secure last hits and denies better. And not only that, it allows me to sideblade the opponents faster. The branches are usually converted into magic wand, the slippers are kept as it is. Templar Assassin is one of those heroes that isn't reliant on their other cores to be able to win the game. She essentially has everything in her kit that is required to win Dora. She can take Roshan, take buildings, burst on foes and scale throughout the game. In short, she has the capability to be the main character. Other than that, she counters most of the meta picks right now like Void Spirit, Pangolier, Spirit Breaker, Ember, etc. In the right hands, TA can do wonders as she has done for me. As soon as I get inside the game, the first thing I do is move towards the edge of the enemy mid tower. I do this to figure out whether the enemy has vision on me or not. How does that work? Basically at night time, the tower vision can't see you at the edge of its attack range, but if the tower has external vision from a ward for example, then it can see you and attack you. If the tower doesn't hit me, that indicates that the enemy cannot see me, and because of that, I can plant my ward on the enemy high ground. The advantage of this is that it is very unlikely it will get dewarded, and in some cases, you will also see the enemy planting a ward. After that, I always prioritize fighting for bounty runes or being near them at the very least. This basically opens up the opportunity for me to secure first blood in case a fight happens. With blood grenade and other forms of slows and stuns from my teammates, I can go near the enemy and use my meld to always steal the first blood, which gives me a head start. One nitpick here is that if you're laning against a ranged hero that you can't reach, Having meld level 1 isn't a, isn't a good idea because TA has a very short attack range that is increased by skilling Psyblades. So I suggest holding your skill point until the very end. You should only skill your meld if you know for a fact that you will get the first bit or a kill with it otherwise. You will get punished for having meld in lane. The extra gold from the kills allows you to get your bottle a bit quicker, which negates the punishment you would get from skilling meld against ranged heroes. In the laning phase, my approach depends upon what kind of matchup I am against. If I am playing against some melee hero like Void Spirit, Pango or Ember, basically any hero that I can abuse my meld on, I always have an aggressive approach. Meld level 1 is absolutely ridiculous against melee heroes. You do insane amounts of damage and not only that, you can zone them out with it and get a couple of denies which gives you a head start. After that, at level 2, I get Psyblades and do further damage to them with it. With levels. TA keeps getting the advantage against these types of heroes. Melee heroes are prone to getting sidebladed all the time because they have to approach the creep wave from a closer point than range heroes. Other than that, every time they come closer, you can meld them and zone them out. The damage trade-off is always in favor of TA. Usually in this case, my item build for the laning is Bottle, followed by a Blightstone, then Rushing Boots of Speed. Blightstone allows me to deal more damage with my sideblades. Not only that, the damage from meld is amped up further with it. Boots of Speed allows me to reach my foes easier. Tia has a very short range, so the boots let her reach them and meld them with ease. In these types of matchups, unless you fuck up royally, you will mostly get level 6 before the enemy, even if you don't get a kill on them, because you will have more denies as a result of them being zoned out. After 6, all you have to do is to place your traps on the ramp, behind the enemy tower, in the middle of the river and play around them. After this, they will have two options. One is to feed you on your traps or play defensively. When they play defensively, you can pressure their towers with your cart. Even if you can't kill them, your goal is to get their tower as soon as possible. The skill build in this build is 1 point in meld at level 1, followed by 1 in Psyblade, followed by 3 in refraction, then your traps and then maxing your refraction followed by another point in Psyblade at level 8 and then maxing your melt. If I'm against a ranged hero, I avoid playing on their face because almost every ranged hero in Dota has more range than TA does at level 1. I skill Psyblades and try to secure CS while also harassing the enemy with the Psyblades. In these types of matchups, there aren't that many pressuring opportunities except for Psyblading. If you want to achieve the same results as you would against melee matchups, you need to be good at Psyblading. 
Tia has insane trading capability because of her refraction damage absorption and side blading. You will almost always come out ahead if you are side blading the enemy successfully. Ideally, you will only skill meld against ranged heroes on level 4 if they are heroes that you can reach, for example, Storm Spirit or Leshrac. These heroes like to play on your face, so you will have more opportunities in melding them as compared to heroes like Queen of Pain or Invoker, for example. Against these heroes, you won't have any points in meld until level 8. Your skill build should look something like this. Level 1 Psyblade, followed by 2 points in Refraction, followed by another point in Psyblade, and then you take another point in Refraction, followed by skilling your traps, then maxing your Refraction at level 7, and then skilling Meld at level 8. After that, you essentially follow the same build. If you skill Meld at level 4, then you add the Psyblade point at level 8 instead of Meld. Lane item build in these matchups varies. If I plan on skinning meld at level 4, then my build is the same as the melee one. But if I don't plan on doing that, then I buy gloves of haste instead of boots because it allows me to side blade the enemy faster. Eventually, after I get my traps, I try to zone the enemy out or punish them and try to take their tower. The key is to take their tower down as fast as you can. If you want to get good at side blading and laning in general as TA, try to stand as close as you can to the enemy creeps. The reasoning behind this is that the faster your projectile reaches the creeps, the harder it will be for the enemy to dodge the side blades. Projectiles take time to reach based on the distance they are at, so standing closer to the creeps makes your projectile reach faster. Other than that, side blades require a lot of practice, but here's a tip that you can use to side blade better. Side blades depend upon your position when the projectile lands rather than when the projectile is released. This basically means that you can control where the side blade will land based off of your movement. Like if you check here, if I blink like this, the side blade hits. If I'm hitting like this, it doesn't work. But let's say I do this and then I do this, the projectile hits. This is why good TA players move a lot while side blading. Every video takes a lot of effort and I want to keep helping you guys by making quality content. If you are enjoying the video, please make sure to like the video as it helps with the YouTube algorithm. And also subscribe. Now back to the guide. One thing I've changed in my playstyle is that previously I would push the lane in and go farm some side camp which is something I think a lot of tier players are doing. This is the wrong approach in my opinion. What I do now is I don't touch any side camps on my side of the map and instead I try to pressure the enemy as much as I can. For example, if I push the wave into the enemy, I will go and try to deny creeps under their tower. If I can't do that, I will go back and block my creeps such that the next wave meets at my ramp for where I can cyblade and or meld the enemy easily. I keep doing this until I get the advantage and eventually kill them or take their tower. When you focus on farming as a TA and not pressuring the enemy, this is where you are considered as eating space rather than making it, which is where TA becomes a griefer. This is the thing that needs to be changed about her. When you constantly pressure the enemy in lane and their tower, the enemy team will react to your pressure. They will put multiple heroes at mid and because of that, your side lanes will have an easier time. This is essentially you creating space for your team as a greedy hero. Tia isn't a mobile hero or has any catch like Void Spirit, Ember Spirit, etc. So rotating to the side lanes isn't something she excels at. But why do we need to rotate to side lanes to create space when we can exert pressure in the mid lane and force the enemy to react to the pressure we are creating? In some situations, there will be no way to pressure the enemy tower because of hero matchups. For example, if you're playing against a hero that can set up a kill on you if you are on their high ground, for example, Bane mid, it's a wild one but I've encountered this. In these cases, if you go mid and try to pressure the enemy tower, chances are the setup with a plus one will lead to your death, which isn't worth it. In this case, you push in the lane into the enemy and farm the nearest camp. You adopt the farming approach when you're in such situations, but don't worry, this will happen very rarely. At around 10 minutes, if you're going according to the guideline, you should have Treads, Blightstone and Dragon Lance. Dragon Lance gives you attack range which TL lacks and you also get a lot of sustain from Dragon Lance. So overall, a must have item on her. The range allows you to position better and do damage from a distance. If you've successfully taken the enemy mid tower, don't go back to your side of the map. What I've seen myself in the past and other players do is that they will take the enemy mid tower but they will go back to their own triangle to farm. Again, when you go back to farm in your own triangle, you don't progress the game you're, and you're not creating space. You're taking space by doing that. Imagine instead of going back to your side of the map after taking the tower, which indicates that you're stronger than the enemy, which is why you got the tower in the first place, you play around the enemy tier 2, pushing in waves and farming their triangle or jungle instead. What does that do? 
You're taking the enemy's farm which is not accessible to any of your other teammates. Not only that, when you are constantly shoving in waves into the enemy, pressure will be created on their tier 2. What this will do is it will force the enemy to react to that pressure and you will still be farming. But you will also be forcing the enemy to move around and stop you. Now your question would be, isn't it very risky to do that? It is indeed risky. But think about it like this. Let's say you took the enemy mid tower at minute 10 and you're close to level 10 with the dragon lance. At that point, most of the enemy supports are level 4 or 5 and not only that, you have traps set up from everywhere they can come from. Because of this, you have the advantage over them. In fact, if they run into your traps, you will just kill them because you're twice as strong as them. This creates so much chaos in your lane that your carry feels at ease. Thus, you create space for your carry by doing this. Always remember, farming the enemy side means you creating space and farming your own side means you taking space one last thing to remember is don't hit the enemy tier 2 tower all you're doing is shoving the wave into the enemy followed by farming the closest camp you can see it could be their jungle or their triangle whichever you think is easier and safer to farm this will allow you to keep increasing your net worth without stealing farm from your teammates this is the secret formula the enemy will keep chasing you and eventually you will snowball off of it just remember this don't go back to your side of the jungle to farm when you're ahead or owning farm the enemy side of the jungle take their farm away and make them starve in case the enemy doesn't bother dealing with you at mid, you don't have to worry. You're still gaining gold and not only that, when you're playing in these positions, you can move to the side lanes quickly because you're closer to them. For example, if you are farming in the enemy jungle, you can rotate to your own offlane side and get a couple of kills there if a, a fight happens. Similarly, if you're farming the enemy triangle, you can very easily rotate to your own safe lane and get a couple of kills there if a fight happens. When you play the map like this, you don't have to sacrifice your farm while rotating. The key thing to remember here is, your goal is to push in waves into the enemy mid tier 2 and then farm something on the side. You only rotate to a side lane from this position if you feel like there's a fight going on. You can keep doing this and have insane amounts of net worth. After Dragonlance, ideally, you should be buying either a Desolator or a Blink Dagger. If you're playing against heroes like Zeus or Pugna, where you need reach, Dagger is better than Deso, as you don't need damage, but reach. 90% of your games, you will be opting for the Desolator. After Desolator, you get your Blink or vice versa. Desolator gives you an insane amount of burst damage combined with the negative armor of Mel Strike, you shred foes. Imagine you have a 15 minute Dragonlance with Desolator. It's very hard to deal with a hero who has that kind of timing. After you have these items, ideally you should be looking to play around the Roshan area. If it's nighttime, you play top and if it's daytime, you play bottom. Eventually, your goal is to get Aegis for yourself. By playing in these areas, I mean you should be farming in these areas. A lot of people confuse playing in an area by just AFKing there. You should keep farming so you can scale better. This is how you fight while keeping your farm up to the mark. Aegis allows you to close out the entire map by taking all the outer towers. Your job after taking Aegis is to take all the outer towers and farm the entire map. Remember not to go high ground with the first Aegis as it is risky. All you have to do is limit the map for the enemies with your traps and keep farming on their side. This will increase your net worth as time passes and decrease the enemy's net worth. Essentially you wait for the enemy to fuck up, which they will 90% of the time and with that you can breach high ground. Another good thing about TA is that she can solo kill Tormentors. With her refreshing charges and double melt, the Tormentor does not stand a chance. It's essentially free gold without begging your team to take it with you. You can basically get your supports a shard for free. I've seen a lot of people not opting for TA's shard. Personally, I think TA shard is probably her most broken aspect if she's snowballing. I usually buy her shard after blink dagger. At that point in the game, no one will have any form of dispel and silence is broken. Not only that, shard allows you to have an increased number of traps which lets you place more of them that can be used to make the game even harder for the enemy. Shard allows you to go high ground as well. You can place traps on yourself and if the enemy jumps you, you can pop it and bait them in. Shard will usually close out the game for you. Not only that, Shard counters all the split pushers like spirit heroes, puck etc. One silence and they get shredded. If you are interested in private coaching, you can join my discord linked in the description. Do let me know in the comments if you have any feedback. That will be it for this video. Please make sure to subscribe and like the video for more high quality content like this. Have a nice day and good luck with your games.